Hey, what's going on guys? In this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to use the watercolor creation kit. So this here is the effect that the action creates for you. So let me just zoom in here, I'll show you some of the details. Okay, I'll show you a few more examples and then we'll head on into Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that your file is all set up correctly. So the first thing you wanna check is the size of your photo. So if you go to the image menu and go to image size, you wanna be working with a high resolution photo. So I recommend using photos in the range of 3000 to 6000 pixels for this action. So you can see my photo here, uh, the shortest dimension is only 2000 pixels. So I'm gonna increase this to say 3500. Okay, so this is a good size for this action. You, you're gonna get much better results using high resolution photos. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna click OK. So that will resize, I'll zoom out. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that the patterns that were included in the download are loaded into Photoshop. Uh, you will not get the correct result if the patterns aren't loaded. So if you're using the latest version of Photoshop, you can just go to the window menu and go to patterns. From here, you can select this icon and go to import patterns. Uh, in the download, there'll be a patterns folder and you wanna load this uh, item here, watercolor creation kit patterns.pat file. So just double click on that. It'll take a second or two to load and they will be here in this folder. Now, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop and you don't have the uh, patterns menu here. You can hit G on the keyboard or find the paint bucket tool. Up the top here, if it's set to foreground, you wanna switch this to pattern. Click on this icon and click on the gear icon and go to import or load patterns and it will appear here. Next, we need to load the actions. So if you go to the window menu, click actions. The actions panel will pop up to the right here Click on this icon and go to load actions. You want to uh, double click on the watercolor creation kit by seven styles.atn file and the action will appear here. Now, you can see that all these actions come inside this folder so you can just collapse the folder to see that. So there are a lot of different actions in here. Now, if you scroll down to the bottom, underneath these three lines, you don't need to worry about any of these. So I've just got in brackets, don't touch. Okay, I use these actions to uh, basically build the effect. So leave those. The three actions that you're uh, initially interested in are these top three ones. So in this first example, I'm gonna be using the low detail watercolor action. And basically the difference between the low detail and the high detail is that the low detail will have a lot more obvious texture separation and you can create a lot more sort of abstract looking results. Whereas the high detail one will appear a lot more smoother and less abstract. So I might just bring this up a bit. So with the watercolor low detail action selected, all I'm gonna do is click play. Now there'll be a few pop-up windows during the action playback. So let me get to those and I'll walk you through uh, what each one does. Okay, so here's the first message. It says step one, rough and edge textures. I won't bother about reading this. I'll just uh, walk you through what you need to do. So you need to click continue here. And what happens, you get this uh, layer style pop-up window. Now, try and move this into good position here. So what you wanna do here is adjust this opacity handle, right? And you can see as I increase that opacity, the textures start to roughen. And the concept here is that all these gray values that you see of your photo represent the shape of your watercolor brush strokes. So, instead of having a smooth edge, what you might wanna do is just roughen up those edges a little bit. So you can see as I increase that, it introduces a lot of roughness. So you can increase it uh, as much as you want, but just keep in mind that that's, these introduce new shapes, new sort of uh, watercolor brush strokes. You can also play around with, uh, you know, like different blend modes. So if I change this to add, uh, linear dodge add, then increase the opacity, 
kind of introduces roughness into the shadows of um, my image. But I'm just going to leave this at hard light, which was the default. And I'm just going to introduce just a tiny little bit here. And when you've done that, you just got to click OK. Now this step is optional, so you don't need to add any roughness. Uh, so click OK. And then we get to the next message, which says step two, create extra paint strokes. So again, what you want to do is click continue and you'll get another layer style pop-up window. Now, the idea here is that if you move this angle around, you'll see, if you look over the subject's face, that it introduces different types, no, sorry, different types of um, paint strokes. So if I just increase the size here, you can see that a bit better. So what I like to do here is just play around with the size and you can see the opacity handle here, you can increase or decrease the opacity. So the concept here is that we want to introduce, you know, a bit more randomness to um, to the overall sort of look of our watercolors. So we're doing that through different um, styles of paint strokes. So you can play around with, uh, what I like to do here is, you know, I'll select this number here and I'll hold down shift and I'll just click up while um, holding down shift. So that way you can see the texture, you can get it into a spot that you like. Uh, now this step again is optional, so if you don't want it, you can just turn off bevel and emboss there, or you can just lower the opacity down to zero, but I'm just going to introduce a little bit of texture, and I'm just going to, that'll do. So I'm just going to click OK when I'm happy with that. And this is a similar step, uh, the next window that pops up, but this time it's going to focus more on adding sort of darker um, paint strokes. So you can see around the lips here, as I increase the opacity down the bottom here, it's introducing a different kind, different type of texture. And again, you can play around with the size, so you can get sort of smaller. So if you look around the eye here, as I adjust the size, I might zoom in a bit here, so see what we're doing. So adjust the size, you can see that. So again, an optional step, you don't need to use it, turn it off if you don't want it. So when you're done with that, click OK. Now this next, this next step says adjust overall image toning. So again, click continue. And what this step allows you to do is sort of fine tune, um, sort of bring up the, some extra details that might be hidden in your shadows or the highlights. Now, if you don't see, if you've got this, um, this option here, show more options, you can click on that. And this will just bring up more options. So the concept here is that you want to experiment with uh, possibly increasing the lightness of your shadows. So you can see if I bring up the shadow amount, it starts to bring back a lot more detail in the darker areas of uh, my photo. But just be aware that as I do that, you can see how it's uh, disrupting the textures that are over the face. So you just want to play around with these a little bit. Again, an optional step, you don't have to. If you like the toning and shape of your watercolor textures as it is, just leave it. I like to play around with this mid-tone one as well, just a little bit, just to see if there's a look I prefer. So when you're done with that, again, just click OK. And this last step, it says, step four, increase image edge detail visibility. So click continue. Let's bring this over here. You'll get this little fade window pop up. And the idea here is if I'll just increase, sorry, decrease this to zero so you can see what it's actually doing. What it does, it brings back at, um, original sort of bump map detail from your photos. You can see if I bring this uh, to 100 and slightly, you can see that it starts to bring back extra details um, from the original look of your photo. So generally I, I leave this between 90 and 100, but sometimes I find that um, due to all the textures that it loses some of the detail from the original photo, that, which you might want to bring back with this handle. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, just use a little bit and then click OK and that's all you need to do so from here the action will take about three minutes to play back and then you'll have your results so I'll get to results and then we'll walk through what every single layer does and what all these extra actions do all right the action just finished and here's the result so there's a lot we can still do with, with this effect so uh, the first thing you want to do is just collapse this watercolor low detail action that's open uh, I'll go through all of these different options shortly. They'll make a lot more sense after I talk about uh, the structure of these uh, layers. So 
Let's just for the moment collapse the actions panel and we'll look into the layer panel. So the first thing I always like to do is quickly collapse all these folders that are open. So to do that uh, with the basic overall adjustments folder, which should already be selected, hold down control alt or command option and click on this arrow. Then release the keys and everything is collapsed. All right, the folder that we're most interested in here is the watercolor folder. So if you turn that off, it basically hides everything. So this is where all our watercolor textures are. And inside the watercolor folder, there are seven different folders. So from the top here, we have text area seven, shadows, and down the bottom, highlights. Now, if I turn all these folders off, right, and we'll turn them on one by one. So the way I've structured this is that I've separated them, separated all these uh, folders by tonal range. So texture area seven is the shadows. So this is the darkest area in your photo. And you can work with these folders individually. You don't need to have them all on. If you just want, um, say if your result looks pretty cool just with the shadows, you can use that. And as I turn them on one by one, you can see we move down towards the highlights. Okay. Now, if you go inside uh, the folder, this structure is the same for every other folder. Okay. So let's talk about how this is set up. So within each tonal range, there are a few things we can control. So from the top here, we have area seven edge darkness. So let's just zoom in here and let's just see if this is the area. Okay. So with the edge darkness, if I just turn this on and off, you can see how um, it is darkening the edge of that texture or basically our um, area seven region. So you can see that there. Uh, so what you can do with this one, firstly, if you don't want an edge texture, you can just turn that off. But you can also double click on this layer and play around with the, uh, the brightness of that texture. But what you'll notice is that, that the opacity of this layer is set to 20%. So you can increase that to 100% and that will dramatically increase the darkness of that um, edge texture. So the next one down is the area seven brightness. Let's zoom out a bit. Uh, now, you, again, you can double click on this layer and with these settings, you can actually control the brightness of that region. So if I just grab this middle hand and I'll drag to the left, that will uh, make it brighter and to the right, make it darker. You can also use this, use this one down here to make it brighter. Okay, so you can control the brightness of every different um, section of your photo. So the next one down is called Area 7 Texture Detail, and I've got in brackets here Opacity. So this layer here basically controls the visibility of the texture within the, within that um, region. So let's just zoom in here. So you can see this watercolor texture in this dark area. So if I increase the opacity of this to 100, it basically blocks out and removes the texture. Now, if I bring it back to zero, you can see it brings it back. So by default, it is set to 30%. So you can um, experiment with that. So this layer here is the actual texture itself. So if I turn that off, you can see it just disappears. Now, the cool thing about this is that if you double click on this layer, okay, it'll bring, it'll bring up the layer style window. So you can see that the pattern overlay is selected. So if you just select this, you can actually change the scale of the texture. So if I adjust that, you can see that um, adjusting the scale. So you can experiment with that. But also if you click on this pattern box here, okay, so here's our patterns that we loaded up at the start of the tutorial. Let's expand that. You can actually choose a different texture to apply to that region. So I created 18 of them for you. Uh, I wanted to create a lot more, but these pattern file sizes were huge. They're about, each pattern is about 70 to 90 megabytes. So this is all I could do for this version. Um, so experiment with those. You can get some really cool looking results. So uh, again, or you can play around with the opacity here if you want, but I generally leave that at 100, just playing on the scale and the texture. So click OK. So now that we've gone through the structure of these folders, let's go back into the actions panel now. So just click on this play icon and there is the actions. So now, so now these will make a lot more sense. 
Okay, so let's go through them. So you can see that these uh, four here, we have no edge bleed darkness down to strong edge bleed darkness. So if you just click no edge bleed darkness, click play, that will remove all the darkness from your textures. So what the action is doing is going inside every one of these folders, every one of these folders here, and it's going to the edge, sorry, edge, sorry, area seven edge darkness and so, so on, area six, and it is adjusting the opacity of that layer. So if I want uh, medium edge bleed darkness, it's, it's gonna go through them all again and readjust the uh, opacity. So it's a really quick way to experiment with um, different edge darknesses. Now, generally, what I like to do here, if I, just for example, I like the medium edge bleed darkness, but I'm thinking that, that some areas it's a bit too strong, you can just go inside that folder and adjust it manually. So let's just say I don't want the darkness around this edge here. I can just turn that off and it's gone. So by default, the action uses a light edge bleed darkness. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on down here. We have this section here. So we've got 100% watercolor texture detail down to no watercolor texture detail. So if I click on no detail, what this action is doing, it's then going inside every one of these folders again, and it's going to these layers, okay? And it's adjusting the opacity of, of those. So these were the layers that I talked about which block out the texture. So if, if it's at 100%, the texture is gone. So I'll bring down the opacity of this one to zero. You can see it brings the texture back. So if you want no watercolor textures at all and you just want the edge darkness, you can do that. Or if you want to, you know, if you want to remove that edge bleed darkness as well, you can do that. So you're left with this kind of look. Okay. Let's just bring back the light. And by default, the action it is set at 70% watercolor texture detail. So if you want to increase that, you can just select the 100 percent Okay. Next, we have this section, which is the watercolor texture variations. So if you want to randomize these textures, you can just select any one of these and click play. Okay. And what this is doing, it's going inside each folder, right? Each one of these layers here, it's selecting and it is choosing a new texture to apply to that region. So it's going inside, it's going to the pattern overlay and it's selecting a new texture. So I just created 11 different presets here for you to experiment with. So you can just go down the line and click play on those. Okay, there might be a variation that you prefer uh, just over the default one. But of course, uh, these are just um, just for efficiency. You can go inside each one of these and manually um, select a texture if you like. All right, let's, whoops, let's collapse these folders. All right, this last section here are the texture contrast presets. So if you want to experiment with different contrast styles, you can just select these and click play. Okay. So some might suit your photo, others might not. So just go through and experiment with those. All right, so that's uh, all these layers, also all these actions. I'll go through this one soon. Uh, let's jump back into the layer panel for now. Actually, before I do that, I might just reset the texture contrast back to its default. Okay, collapse these. Next, let's talk about what these red X's are on all these folders here. So if you just click on these red X's, go down and click on them, what that is doing is hiding everything inside those folders. Okay, so these are layer masks, or in this case, folder mask, masks. And if they are black, they are hiding everything that is inside the folder. So if I just select this mask here and hit Control or Command I to invert it, That'll invert it to white, so now everything inside the folder is visible. All right? So if you want to temporarily disable the mask, you hold down Shift and then click on the mask, and so that puts that red X to it. So the reason why I've done this is that when the action has finished playing back, right, you get a glimpse of the entire, sorry, the watercolor being applied to your entire photo. 
but um, by separating all these uh, different areas of your photo out, this allows us to brush on our watercolor by tonal range, which is really cool. So if you hit B right, to activate the brush tool, and if you right click anywhere over your photo, this will bring up the brushes panel. So if you import the brushes that were included in the download, so if you click on this icon, go to import brushes, and select the watercolor creation kit brushes.avr file. So it will appear here. So let's twirl this open, we have all the brushes. Now these five brushes here are created specifically for this step of revealing um, your photo, your watercolor. So I'll just select this, this one here. Now, if I just select texture area seven, I'll select the mask. Now what you want to make sure is that um, your brush is white because we want to brush white onto the mask to reveal what's inside that folder. So you can just hit X on the keyboard that will flip it between black and white. So let's flip it to white. Um, let's set the opacity to say 70%. So if you just hit, if you just hit seven on the keyboard, that will change to 70. Now with this mask selected, when I start brushing, you can see that now I'm revealing my watercolor where I want. Okay, so let's just say I want only half of her face to be, um, you know, detailed and the other half sort of fade off. I can just go down these folders here and start brushing onto the mask. The great thing about it is that I know as I'm going down here that we're working towards lighter um, tonal values in the photo. Okay. So if you hold down Alt and click on the mask, you can view it. So you can see that's where I've been brushing. Now, because we're using a lower opacity, it means that we can brush over that area again and will increase the opacity uh, in those areas. Okay, so I can just go down and keep brushing. Now, what I like to do here is if I hold down Shift on that mask to disable it, I get a preview of what it would look like if I brushed if I filled in this mask entirely with white. So I kind of like the edge of her hair here, so I might just want to start brushing over here. If you use the left and right square brackets, you can adjust the um, size of your brush. Okay, so I can start brushing down here. And this is where you really just want to be creative with your brushing. And if you want to undo what you've done, you can just uh, hit X on the keyboard, flip it to black. Now when I start brushing black, I can basically just erase what I've just done. If I want to redo it, hit X, flip it back to white. Okay. So I'll go down and I'll hold down shift to see how, so I kind of like this line that's coming down the side here. Let's just fill in a few more of these areas. Right, maybe something like this. So I want to see, so you can see how this section is a bit lighter. So what I'll do is I'll just hold down shift and click on these masks and see what folder is affecting that zone. So it's this one here, texture area six. So I'll just brush, um, hit B, I'll just brush more in this section. Okay. So let's go down these folders and take one more look to see if there's any other areas I want to reveal. So I kind of like this line running down here and here. So let's reveal uh, those. So I'll hit B, activate my brush tool. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, a bit more of the hair, I think, yeah, yeah this way. All right, let's go down, I hold down shift. Let's see what else is happening. I might brush a little bit more around the lips here. Texture area four, let's have a look. Might brush a bit more up here. Uh, I might reveal just a little bit around here. And don't forget you can use any one of these um, other brushes as well, if you like. And texture area one. Might just reveal a little bit more around here. Okay, 
Okay. So don't forget, even if you have revealed a portion of your uh, photo, you can still use the, all these actions here to experiment with different looks. So you can still, you know, remove all the edge bleed if you want. Okay. Uh, so I'll just turn that back. And don't forget that quick shortcut key of holding down Control Alt or, or Command Option and clicking on these arrows next to the folders to quickly collapse everything. All right, let's talk about all these other folders here. So before I do that, I might just hold down Shift and disable these masks so our entire image is filled in. So we can talk about these. Uh, let's go inside this folder here. Reveal original photo details. Let's go inside here and we'll go through these one by one. So this top layer here is reveal original photo and I've got in brackets brush mask. So you'll notice that the mask is black so the layer won't be doing anything. Now if I flip that to white, control command I, it is basically our um, untouched photo. Now if there are very small details in your photo that you want to um, look a bit more like the original photo, you can brush white onto that mask. So let's just zoom right in here on the eye. Okay, so if I hit B, I'll grab my brush. Let's decrease the size of this brush. So if I start brushing white, let's increase the opacity to 100% of that brush. If I start brushing white, you'll see that that is just revealing our original photo. So I'm un undo that a few times. So there might be there might be situations where you just want to you know add a little bit more realism into a section of your photo. Um, you know, bring back some of your original photo. Uh, just be careful about, you know, applying 100% opacity to this layer. Generally what I like to do, um, if I do use it, so, so say I brush this area, I might just adjust the opacity here. So there's 0%, there's 100, and I might only just use, you know, just a fraction of it because I really want to retain that uh, watercolor look. But that option is there uh, if you need it. So zoom out, control command zero to zoom out. So this layer here, original photo edge contrast. So by default, this is set to 0% opacity. So I'll just turn that to 100%. So 0, 100. So if you want to bring out more of your original photo's edge details, you can just adjust this opacity a bit, okay? And again, you can use the mask here to control Let's say that I like how it's bringing out these few little bits of highlights in the hair, but I don't want it to affect the face. So what I'll do, I'll just select the mask, hit Control or Command I, I'll flip that to black, hit B, and I'll start brushing with white to bring out those uh, extra bits of detail that I liked. Again, you can hold down Shift to disable it, take another look around. Um, but I, I rarely use this layout, but it's there if you need it. The next one down is original photo contrast. So by default, this is set to 60% opacity. If I um, bring that to 0%, you can see it removes a lot of the contrast out of the uh, image, 100%. So basically all it's doing is using the original um, tonal values, uh, sorry, the tonal values of your original photo and blending it with the watercolor. So yeah, by default it's at 60%. So you can decrease that. You'll notice that as you decrease it, uh, some of the textures start to come out a lot more. So just be aware of this layer and then it's set to 60%. This layer here, uh, original photo color. So if you turn that off, that is where your photo color is coming from. Okay. You uh, don't need to use it at 100%. You can just decrease that if you like. All right. Now this one here, original photo luminosity. So if I just bring this to 100%, it's basically similar to this layer here, uh, but there might be a situation where you want to um, apply some of the original photo details across all of your watercolor. So you might just want to increase this maybe five or 10%. But again, I, I never use this. It's just there if you um, feel you need it. All right. Okay, the next folder up is the color and contrast randomizers. So if you go inside this folder, there are three layers. So, uh, and they're all hidden. So if you turn on this top layer here, contrast randomizer, 
Now, the way you use this layer is you double click on it, okay, and it'll bring up this gradient map settings. So if you just click on this colored gradient map, right, and there is this button here called randomize. Each time you click that, it will create a new contrast look to your um, watercolor. So you can just click away and um, yeah, look for a contrast preset you like. I also like to change this color model to HSB or lab. Okay, they sort of um, create varying looks as well. Okay, so typically with, act with my actions, I will create a bunch of different layers which give you different um, contrast and color presets. But with this, this gives you infinite uh, options. Okay. I'll cancel that. So that is there if you want it. Now it's the same for this layer here. It is, but uh, this works with color. So if I turn this on and again, click on this colored bar, I can hit the randomize button and that will apply a different color preset to my design. Okay. I've, I like quite like HSB uh, for this. So you can experiment with that. Uh, you can also experiment with changing the blend mode. So you can see that the opacity this layer is at 50%. So if you want to add a lot more color, you can hit drag to 100. You can also change this to, uh, to say overlay, if you want. Um, lighter color, that'll fill in basically the darker areas of your image with the color. Or you can just set it to color. Okay, so if I just set it to color, all that will, it won't add any uh, additional contrast to our design. It'll only apply a different um, color grade. Let's cancel that. All right, next folder up is the paper texture. So if you don't want this texture, you can see that it's been applied to uh, the watercolor, you can just turn the folder off altogether, okay? Or you can go inside and here's the paper texture here. You can adjust the opacity if you like. Uh, there's also, I'll zoom right in here, zoom so all the way in. There's also this uh, layer here called grit texture, which is at 2% opacity. So if I just increase this, you see it adds a little bit of roughness to the texture, but you want to keep this very low. I think, yeah, by default, I've got it set at 20, uh, sorry, 2%. Now, if you uh, double click on this watercolor paper texture layer, okay, and if you go to the texture option here, this is where uh, the texture is and it's a pattern. So there is one other um, paper texture. If you want to use that, you just click on this one and switch it to that one. So that's those two there, but this is the default, this one. So I'll click OK. So that is the paper texture. So the next folder up is basic overall adjustments. So if you go inside this folder, uh, we've got a bunch of different layers here, and these are to help sort of fine tune uh, the look of your watercolor. So this top layer here, overall brightness and contrast, you can double click on this, and you can experiment with adjusting the overall brightness and contrast of your uh, watercolor. Uh, this one here, overall brightness and contrast two. So this is a different style. This uses a curves adjustment layer. You can experiment with adjusting these handles here. So this lower, um, this bottom corner is the shadows and up the top here are the highlights. So if I wanted to darken the shadows more, I could drag this down or I could lighten them. So by default, it was somewhere around there. Overall color tint, if you want to, um, apply a yeah general tint to your watercolor you can just pick a different color just like that overall color saturation if you want to boost the saturation of your colors you can just drag this up uh, overall color vibrance double click on that by default i've actually increased the vibrance uh, of your photo up to plus 48 so uh, you can experiment with that there's also a saturation handle here as well you can uh, experiment with. This next layer is the highlights brightness. So if you want to affect the brightness of your highlights, you can um, adjust that handle. So this will, uh, if I go inside the mask here, hold down Alt and click on the mask, you can see that these are the brighter zones of our photo and that's where it will target. And this is the shadows. You can adjust the brightness of the shadows here as well. So if we go inside the actions panel, there is one more action yet to 
uh, we haven't talked about, which is this one here, create watercolor bleed layers. So to demonstrate this, what I might do is go back inside the watercolor folder and I will re-enable these masks just by clicking on them. So this will then revert to our um, the design that we brushed on. Okay. Now, if you just select the create watercolor blue layers and click play, what this will do, I'll just hide the uh, actions panel. What this will do, this will create a folder at the top of the layer order called color bleed. Okay. Now, if you go inside here, there are uh, four different layers. So let's start at the bottom one here. You'll see that it's a layer that has a black mask applied to it. So if I turn it on and off, it's going to do nothing. And if I hold down shift and disable the mask, you'll see that it has this look. Now, the way we use this layer is we brush on. So if I just hit B, grab my brush tool, and I'll just increase the size of my brush using the right square brackets. Now, if I brush white onto this mask, let's say I brush down here, what this will allow us to do, this will allow us to bleed out our um, watercolor edges a bit more. So you can see that working there. So you can kind of, um, you can brush anywhere to create, uh, yeah, this really cool looking effect. So uh, what I might do, let's try a different brush as well. Now, one thing to note about this layer is that it has a pattern overlay applied to it. So if you like, you can double click on this and you can actually select a new texture, which will um, appear within the area that we uh, brushed, which is pretty cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I might uh, fill this mask in black and I'll just redo this. Uh, I might just lower my passive down a bit and let's just, you know, take a bit of time here, extend out some of these um, textures. Hit X to undo if you don't like it. Okay, that'll do. Now this next one up is the same um, concept, but this one extends the colors out even further. So if I brush onto this mask, okay, you'll see that it's a lot more aggressive, but um, it fades out as we get further away, similar to how this layer works below. Okay, now what I also like to do on this layer is use the drops brushes that were included in the download. So if you hit B, and right click and bring out the brushes, you'll see that we've got all these high resolution brushes here. So I can just select one, and if I just uh, brush, just click um, anywhere over my photo, that will apply uh, some drops like that. And it's it's cool because it's actually using, if I hold, uh, hide this mask for a second, it's using our original photo colors and just sort of bleeding those out. So you get this really cool looking effect. Now, if I didn't want um, any drops over my subject's face, I can just select the folder mask and I'll just select one of these brushes and I'll brush black and brush those away. Okay, I might go back to this layer, hit B, I'll grab another brush. Oop, make sure brushing white. Now, if you don't like the brush or you don't think it suits it, there's plenty more. So I might just grab one of these. Might actually be a bit too big. I made these brushes really big. Uh, that'll do, something like that. Now, if you want uh, another layer, you can just hold down Alt or Option and drag up. Okay, and now um, I can just fill this mask in black and then create a new set of brushes. Now, if you don't want this effect of the brushes fading off, uh, what you could do is just create a new layer anywhere in your um, layer panel. So Control Shift N or Command Option N, that'll create a new layer. I'll move this outside of the color bleed folder and I can just hit B, but this time um, I can brush and it won't, oops, I'll make this black. It won't be affected by what's happening inside the color bleed folder. So I can select a blue, so say grab one of these blue tones, hit B, and now when I brush, so I brush down here, so you can add um, splatter, paint splatter, wherever you like. So I could hold down I, so 
press I and grab some of this reddish tone from the lips, grab a new brush and you know paint some out there. So you can be really creative with using those uh, brushes. Perhaps that. Now an important thing to note about this color bleed folder and the action is that if I wanted to make changes to uh, this designer, let's just say for example I go back inside here and I'm like okay I prefer this look. So you can see how firstly um, how it's this color bleed layer is now affecting those layers. Um, what you want to do or the way this action works, the um, color bleed, is that it takes a snapshot of how your watercolor looks at the time when you play the action and so it will sample the colors where they exist so basically where you brush it will bleed out those colors so if i change my mind and decide that this is the direction where i want the watercolor to go i would delete the watercolor bleed folder and then run the action again so that i can bleed out you know some of these um, darker textures down the bottom here okay so just keep that in mind that it, um, it looks, this action looks at the current state of your photo. And yeah, so if you make changes to it, delete it and then run it again. So that is an overview of all of the layers and folders and how to make customizations to your uh, default watercolor results. Now let's uh, talk about how we can uh, apply some additional adjustments to further fine tune our results. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a snapshot of our design here and put it onto one layer. So to do that, you hold down Control, Shift, Alt, E or Command, Shift, Option, E. Just make sure that your uh, top folder or layer is selected. And you'll notice that what it does, it puts a, uh, creates a single layer and there's a snapshot of our design. Okay, now what I wanna do, I wanna right click and go to convert to a smart object just so that uh, with these additional settings that we apply, we can, um, if at a later, later stage we decide we want to change it, we can just double click on the layer and change it. So what we're going to use is if we go to the filter menu and go to camera raw filter, there is a bunch of different things in here we can use to adjust the look of our watercolor. So let's just go through uh, a few, few things. So in this section here, we can do things like, you know, uh, adjusting the the brightness of our blacks, uh, our whites. We're going to contrast here, reduce contrast. Uh, we can reduce the clarity. So let's zoom in a bit. We can reduce the clarity here, which creates a pretty cool effect with this uh, watercolor action. So you can see out there, kind of smooths things over a bit. Uh, Typically what I like to do is actually reduce the clarity a little bit and then up the texture. So you can see the texture, what that's doing. So I'll just increase that a little bit. Um, you can add, further, add a bit more vibrance or saturation. But I also like to check out this option here. So browse profiles. So if you click on this, uh, this icon here, we have a number of different, let's zoom out a bit, a number of different, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, color presets. So if you go inside, say, the artistic folder, I can just move my mouse over these and it will apply a different uh, color preset. So uh, let's have a look. So that looks pretty cool, artistic number four. And the cool thing about it, you have, the, you have this slider here where you can um, adjust how much of that you want to apply. So if I bring this to uh, zero, so there's 100%, zero. So you can choose how much of that you want to apply. Okay, and I'll click on close, but there's other ones here as well. You've got like, you got some modern presets. Um, you've got some vintage presets here. So I, I generally like to look at these, uh, you know, cause some pretty cool ones in here. So click on close. There's also this, uh, click on this icon here, you've got some further presets. So you can go inside here, uh, you've got some color presets here. You've got more creative, um, creative color presets. You've got a bunch of black and white. Um, some of these, you can add a bit of grain. I often like to add a bit of sharpening. There's also a vignetting option down the bottom here. So if I zoom out here, you can see that working. So let's just add that heavy vignette. Okay, so there's lots you can do in here. Uh, very cool 
tool to use. Let's check out just seeing the highlights. Pull back down a bit. So when I'm done, I'll just click OK and it'll apply that. So if you um, hide and then shut, you so you can see the before and after there. All right. Now because we converted this to a smart um, smart object, we can double click on this smart filter here, which will bring back up our uh, camera <coughs> excuse me our camera raw settings, so we can further fine tune our result. Okay, let's check out our before and after. So I'm going to select the background layer here, hit Control or Command J, and then to move this to the top, you hold down Control Shift Right Square Brackets or Command Shift Right Square Bracket and move that to the top. So there's our original photo and there's our watercolor. All right, let's move on to the next example. All right, for this example, I'm going to demonstrate the watercolor high uh, detail action. So before I do that, I'm just going to check the size of this photo. It's got an image, image size. Uh, this is a good size. I mean, if I wanted to, I could increase that a little bit, but uh, I think this is good. All right, so I'm going to open the actions panel. Select the watercolor high detail action, click play. So with the high detail action, there's only one uh, pop-up and here it is here. And it just allows us to adjust uh, the overall image tone. So you click continue. And this window appeared in the uh, low detail action as well. So this just allows us to adjust the, um, the brightness of our shadows and highlights. So you can see here if I, um, if I increase the shadow brightness, it's bringing out a lot more detail um, along the edge here of these houses. Okay, and I might want to experiment with the mid-tone as well. Uh, the highlights, I might bring that down a little bit. And that'll do, I'll click OK. And that's all we need to do for the high detail action. So there's, there's a lot less control over adding additional textures. Uh, so I'll just uh, skip ahead and get to the result. All right, so there's the default results. So you can, of course, go through uh, all these and experiment with different looks. So what I might do, I might just leave it as uh, as the default here, and I'll go inside the watercolor folder, and let's just go through this process again of revealing um, these one by one. Uh, let's hit B. I'll switch to, I'll just use, uh, let's use this brush. Make sure white is my active color because we're going to reveal um, what's inside the folder and I can start brushing away. So I'm going to hold down shift and just quickly check um, this without the mask applied. Okay, I'll just start brushing again. So let's just work on revealing sort of this corner here. Hold down shift, so I might add a little bit down here. Anyway, I won't spend too much doing this, uh, doing this but you can see how this is looking, looking pretty good. Um, what I might check out now is no edge blade darkness to see how that looks. I'll add medium. We might just leave it at light, it looks good. Okay, Control Alt or Command Option, and I'll collapse all those. All right, so next what I might do is create that color bleed layer. So if I just, um, so we can extend some of this watercolor out to the left a bit. So I'm gonna go up to my Create Watercolor Bleed Layer, so click Play. Okay. Now, when that action's finished playing, it automatically um, selects the brush for you and a white and uh, white as a color. So you can just start brushing straight away. So let's just all right. Might select this top one. Select the mask. Hit B. Let's just grab one of these. Now, if you're uh, using the later version of Photoshop, you can hold down shift and the left and right uh, arrows and that will rotate the brush, okay? Now, 
Now I might just brush away any areas that I don't want. Also, this is a, um, you can also do the same with the watercolor master folder here. If there is just areas where you do not want any watercolor applied, um, you can just brush black onto that and that will affect um, the visibility of everything within um, the folder. So undo that. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Now what you can also do in the color bleed folder is you can adjust the, uh, the brightness of what you've just added. You can see that there. Uh, you can also adjust the color saturation. So if you want to uh, make it a bit more saturated, you, want to, you don't want to oversaturate it because then you get banding up here, but uh, you can um, play around with that as well. Uh, next, let's apply a overall tint to our um, watercolor here. So let's just maybe try. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that since I've changed the color, you can see that the color bleed layer is sitting on top of our uh, basic overall adjustments. So just keep in mind that if you do change the overall color tint, move the basic adjustments folder up above the color bleed folder. So to move the folder up, you're going to just drag it up like that or hold down control or command right square bracket. That will move that up. So let's now jump back inside here. And let's try maybe a yeah, that will do. And another thing you might want to move up is the paper texture. Uh, in most cases, you actually probably want the paper texture sitting on top of everything. Okay, so just keep that in mind if you're adding uh, the color bleed layer. All right. Lastly, let's uh, let's merge everything. Uh, that we see onto one layer and we'll use the camera roll filter again to play around with some of the settings So control shift alt E or command shift option E while the top layer or fold is selected and That will merge our design onto one layer. Let's right click and convert that to a smart object Next let's go to uh, filter camera roll filter uh, Let's click on these this icon for browse profiles and let's take a look at uh, maybe vintage might suit this. I might just zoom out a bit. I think that one's pretty nice. Vintage 8. Let's keep looking though. I'll check the artistic folder. Let's just stay with uh, eight and let's adjust the amount just a little bit. All right, let's close that. Now let's, uh, let's maybe reduce a little bit of clarity up the texture. All right, I'm gonna jump into the presets here and take a look at some of these. I think what we've got is looking fine. I might just add some um, light sharpening and then click OK. Last thing what I might do is crop this design. I don't need all this space over here. So I'm just going to hit C on the keyboard and you'll see that this um, bounty box appears around our watercolor. I'm just going to drag this in just like that, sort of frame this a bit better. Probably bring this, hit enter to confirm that. And there we go. Let's check out the before and after. So I'm going to select the bottom layer here. Control or Command J to duplicate it. Then to move it to the top, Control Shift right square bracket or Command Shift right square bracket. And there's the before. And there's just with a couple of minutes of work. All right, guys, that is it. That's how you use the watercolor uh, creation kit. I hope you come up with some really nice watercolor designs. And thanks for watching.